Hello, this is Zeke777, and welcome to Source Studies. This is going to be a short little series, mini-series I guess, that's going to be taking place kind of alongside our existing Let's Play uh, survival server here that's going on behind us in the background. So what this particular episode is about is we're going to go over three pretty simple uh, source generation setups and then two more that are a bit more complicated but potentially still worth it for you. So let's go ahead and get started. The first one is going to be talking about the agronomic source link. So what this does is it will give us source, which is power of course, uh, gives us source based off of growth events, anything around it. So it has a fairly large range. I'm going to place it here between these two because they're both going to be making use of this. Uh, this one here, like I said, it's used as growth events. Now bone mealing it is not a growth event, it has to be an actual growth tick. So let's get into how that actually works and what we can use it for. To start off, this is going to be a berry farm. So starbuncles here, they're pretty quick to make, real simple, real cheap. Let's go ahead and grab some source berries and just kind of plant them nearby. So what we can do is we can say, Mr. Starbuncle, your job is going to be storing it in this chest. So what will happen is if he finds a berry lying around, he's going to pick it up and put it in the chest. And importantly, he will also start harvesting these berries. So what we can do, and you'll also notice he won't get uh, pricked by these, he doesn't take damage. We can just plant a small field of these, and he'll basically just to harvest these as they start ripening. So he's going to be working off camera for a while, and just kind of harvesting those as these grow. In fact, let's go ahead and grow some of these. So let's do a touch, and we want grow. So we can do this, it won't count for the agronomic, but we can just kind of illustrate how this actually works. Let's get these guys growing. Let's go ahead and add some area to this. So these here, you can see they are now ready to be harvested. And once he sees that, which will take him a little bit sometimes, he'll go ahead and pick it. And then he'll go and pick those up and put them in the box. Meanwhile, over here at our agronomic source link, let's go ahead and put a couple source jars nearby. It doesn't really matter how many we put, it's just going to start working. So as these get natural growth events, what will happen is it's going to send power over to the source link, and it's going to start filling up our jars. Now, this alone isn't particularly fast. However, it's pretty easy to expand. This guy is afraid of a fairly large range. We can go ahead and expand that a little bit more. And as he works, he's just going to fill up that chest. So it's going to be doing two things. One, it's going to be giving us the source from the growth events. We're already at 1%. And two, it's going to be giving us a whole bunch of source berries. Now, source berries on their own, you can eat them even if you're not hungry. They don't do a whole lot. But what they can do is they can give you power. So my cellular source link, this one here, eats food. So we can place it down. And what we can do is we can set up some little quick little automation here to start feeding it. So let's go ahead, place down an arcane pedestal. These are able to eat off of a pedestal nearby, so you don't have to just toss things in world. You of course can, and you'll eat them, but it's a lot easier just to leave it in uh, inventory form here by just setting things to a hopper. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a second starbuncle, and your job is going to be filling up this hopper. And more importantly, you're also going to be taking from this chest. And of course you are inside the hopper, which is slightly less ideal. Let's go ahead and break this. And go ahead and place it back. Now he's bound to the block position, so he'll happily still work even though it broke the block and placed it back. And as we can see, the source jar nearby, the closest one is this one right here, it is filling up. It's already up to 9%, which is notably going up quite a, li quite a bit faster than the 5% on the jar over here from the actual agronomic source link. But what this tells us is we can basically kind of double dip here. We can pull the source from the actual growth with the agronomic, and we can then use that with the mycelial in order to get even more source. Quite honestly, this is such a simple design that I would recommend anyone build it. It's arguably one of the simplest and fastest setups to do. I mean, I basically just did it all on camera there in just a few minutes. So it produces quite a bit. It's up to 14 already. And of course, it's just how much do you want to scale this? You can always expand it. You can do quite a lot with this. Just get bigger and bigger. Now, next up sort of expands on that same concept of just farming. So one of the best farming things in here is the bookworm. So I have one following me around here in familiar form, but if we get a new one, link it up to a lectern by shift right clicking and turn it into a bookworm itself. So let's go ahead and put some water down here and let's go ahead and patch that dirt. 
what we can do is we can fill in this as just a simple farming plot. So let's go ahead and turn this into a quick 9x9. So while the mycelial source link is filling us up to 26% and our agronomic is only getting up to 19 at the moment, really what's going to kind of make this come into its own is the fact that the agronomic source link can pull from a very, very large area. I believe it's a 19 block diameter, uh, sorry, radius, so quite a big area, which means I can just simply expand this little crop farm right next to it and it's going to get all the source from that as well. So let's go ahead and plant just a whole bunch of various things. It doesn't really matter what we're growing at this moment in time. What matters is that something is growing. So I'm just going to go with the basic kind of wheat, carrots, and potatoes. And I'm going to farm it in a line. Farming in a line, by the way, will improve the growth speed uh, by roughly double, if I understand correctly. So it's a pretty effective way to get more growth out of this than just, you know, a single field full of wheat. There we go, and we've got the whole field planted, and as you can see, it's already starting to grow, or at least get growth ticks. It's not growing, you know, terribly fast at the moment, but it is still doing something. So we're up to 27%, and this one's at 38 So all in all, my cellular is still going to be outproducing it, but it doesn't have to be an either-or situation. So this is still growing. It hasn't even really started getting into actually, you know, useful stuff yet. Now, as I said, this works off of growth events. So once it's fully grown, nothing's going to happen. So what do we do? We have our bookworm here. Currently, it's doing nothing. What a bookworm can do, however, is cast spells for us. And one of the more useful spells, at least in this situation, is going to be touch, harvest, pickup. Pretty cheap spell. Let's put that on our parchment there by shift right clicking and go ahead and tell our bookworm what to do. So now what's going to happen is once any of these are ready to be harvested, he's going to fly over and start doing that. But first, we probably need to expand this. So by default, it is just going to be this kind of just adjacent blocks here. Let's go ahead and grab our Dominion Wand. And I believe just shift right click. Yes, shift right click. Set area to 5x5. Five five, set area to 9x9. Nine nine. This will go up to 17x17. 17 17, so one bookworm can handle a fairly large field here. Uh, let's go ahead and leave that at 9x9 nine nine because that's all the area that we actually care about right now. So what we can do then is let's turn this back into our grow spell grow and a couple of area effects on here and let's kind of jump start this whole thing as you can see our bookworm is going to start getting to work very slowly well not too slowly i guess but he'll work his way around the field at each different plant he's going to go over to it cast harvest and pick up and it's going to be depositing it into the adjacent chest now we can easily set a starbuncle up to here to extract this and you know sort it into dead k chests for each different item that's easy enough to do but honestly beyond the scope of what we are doing here. So we have a field that's now up to 52% and this is at 56. It's starting to pick up. And like I said, one bookworm can handle a very large field, you know, 17 by 17. So he can actually do this pretty cheaply and effectively while generating more source than it takes for him to actually cast the spells. And of course, there's no reason to leave it at this. As I mentioned, we're farming things. Potatoes and carrots, those can both be eaten and wheat can also be turned into some other stuff as well. So these carrots and potatoes, you can easily send these over here to the mycelial, just the same as these berries, and be able to extract even more power out of this. So your source needs should be pretty well met with just these two systems. But why would you want to? Next up here is the volcanic source link. This one here, similarly to the mycelial, you can just hopper into an arcane pedestal next to it, and it will start consuming items. Now we have some coal blocks on us, Let's go ahead and place down a couple of these jars. So what we can do is toss one coal, and after a few seconds, it will then send it over here. Now that one coal block just filled up 10% of a jar. 13% uh, actually, sorry. Uh, it only will send 10% at a time per burst, and that is honestly gonna be our main bottleneck here is how fast we can transfer the source. Let's go ahead and throw all this in here. What's gonna do is it's gonna start eating through these as fast as it can until its internal buffer is filled up, and quite honestly, its internal buffer is larger than a source jar, so it's pretty fast. Um, as we can see, we're up to 33%, 43%. It's going to keep climbing up by 10% at a time here. I think it's every 5 seconds it'll send one. Um, 53%. And next one here, 63 At that point, I think we've already passed the output here. Oh, 79%. Okay. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's much faster than those fields over there. However, that does require having a source of burnables, in this case blocks of coal, because why not? 
This is actually the system that I'm using in my base here for the Let's Play, only instead of blocks of coal, what I'm doing is I am burning blazing archwood. So it's just farming the archwood trees and burning those directly. Instead of turning it into coal or charcoal, uh, if I burn the blocks directly with that, uh, basically every single blazing archwood is about the same cost as a coal, only I don't have to process it. Just chop down tree, feed it in here. Chop down tree, feed it in here. Chop down about you know 20 trees and you've filled up an entire chest. So pretty effective at generating a lot of source very quickly. Also very easy to scale. Uh, my current generation up top there is I have six volcanic source links surrounding these pedestals here, and it just burns it twice as fast. Well, I guess six times as fast. So more source than you will probably ever need. One last thing on these kind of three generation methods is the side effects. So my cellular source link has an interesting effect where if I break the dirt around it here and replace it with actual dirt, what will happen is it will slowly over time replace this, uh, assuming that this doesn't grow over in beforehand, it will replace this with mycelium and eventually start growing mushrooms on it. So it's an interesting way to generate some extra resources here and get access to things like mycelium without having to go find a mushroom biome. And similarly, the volcanic source link, I have this stone underneath it. What it will eventually do very slowly is it will start turning the stone into magma blocks and then into lava, which means you're able to get renewable lava by just kind of burning things. Um, I will say that the actual rate of doing this is terribly slow, um, and it works best if you're doing something like burning the blazing archwood, because it will generate more heat as opposed to any other generic burnable, such as this block of coal, which will generate uh, about 10% of what a single blazing archwood will. So it takes about a thousand or so heat total to burn through the stone here into magma and then into lava. Um, I think you get one per random burnable and you get I think 10 for a blazing archwood. So it takes quite a while but it does eventually produce lava and magma. Uh, it'll also start producing lava lilies which will surround it on the lava spaces around it. Um, which can be useful. Uh, they're basically like carpets, but they can be see-through in different colors. So kind of an interesting block. And that concludes our look at three simple source generators. I hope you found this video informative and hopefully you can apply some of these to your world. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.